All right, guys, and we're here against Matt, and he brings actually the exact six I think I thought he was going to bring, except no Garganak, was that he brings Kruko Dile. Obviously, looking at this matchup, if you guys didn't already, be sure to check out the team builder in the top right-hand corner, and while you're at it, you might as well check out Matt. He's going to be up there as well. My matchup, not the best. I do kind of lose straight up to Dragapult. We have two Pokemon to try to mitigate that in both Dashbun and Wu Chi Yin. Uh... My original plan was to lead Glamora, and then if he leads Garganak, we'll switch into the Goldingo. Goldingo obviously has a Covert Cloak, which is not very useful anymore because there is no Garganak. I think I still lead Glamora. Maybe. I don't know. I feel like the Crook leads super likely. Do I Oko Crook with the Energy Ball? I don't. I, I still think Crook is my... or Glamora is my best lead. I don't know. If he leads Crocodile with a little bit of tough spy, I can pivot into Quack. I can pivot into Quack and then you turn out, I think. I think that's fine. I don't know. <sighs> him not bringing Garganako kind of throws a wrench in my plans because I was really heavily relying on him to lead that Pokemon because he has like the last seven BBR games he's played. So I don't know. We'll see what happens here. The game plan is to get T spikes up. Hopefully, hopefully he leads Toxtricity. That'd actually be ideal. Uh, to get T spikes up and then win late game with Chien and Pal. So he is going to lead Toxtricity actually. Perfect. Perfect. I don't think you give me damage on this Pokemon. I'd be really shocked to see that. We're going to get a T spike up. Because that's going to force damage on something. Or that's going to force a poison on something unless he goes hard Corviknight. In which case we just go Goldango and we'll be fine. Uh, the only problem here is if he switches hard out into the Corviknight. He's not going to stay in here. He shouldn't stay in unless he's Scarf. Because I do have the potential to have Earth Power. He stays in. Why? Why does he do that? So we're going to get the T-Spikes up. Very heavily valued those. And he's just going to go for Overdrive. Oh, that should bring me down to Sash. It actually doesn't. So I'm going to go for Power Gym. I think, because that puts him in range of that puts him in range of potential Chi and Pao Ice Shard, but I do kind of value Glamora still, because I think he could switch out this turn and save this Toxtricity, or just attack him because I don't kill him. I'm so shocked he stayed in. He has to be like, he has to be Sash or something, right? I, I think I go Wu Chi in maybe, and fire for Leech Seed. We can gauge some damage. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to go Wu Chi in. We're going to give some damage. We are obviously faster, so he might still switch out. So my thought process there, right? I didn't want Glamour to die just to get damage on this Pokemon and then him get rid of the T-Spike later by just coming in because this is his Ground of Poison. So we'll see what he does here. I'm still shocked he did that. So 373 down to 327. Let's see if that specs. 373 down to 327. Uh, 46 damage. Is that specs? No. So he could Sledge Bomb here, Sledge Bomb would do about 50. I think it's worth just throwing off a knockoff, seeing where item he might be. Uh, potentially getting a knockoff on the Rotom Heat that wants to come in, the Corvmite that wants to come in, even the Azumarill. So we're going to get a knockoff here. He might be Scarf. He could be Sash though. He might be Sash based on how he led that. He's going to go into Rotom and we're going to knock off this thing's boots, which is fantastic. The only bad thing, we did way too much damage, I feel like. We did way too much damage, like 33%, I want to say 25 to 33%. Which actually looks about right for max HP Rotom, so we're going to switch out here. I think probably Volt Switch, right? I don't really have a great pivot into this. We could go Glamour, I just Glamour level Volt Switch. It's a very uncomfortable pivot. He does, if he's no investment, 30 to 36, which is going to do 112 HP max. He has a chance to KO us. I, I don't really have a great pivot here. I could protect, see what he wants to do. I don't think you plot here, so I think that is going to be my play. So I kind of want to see what he does. I don't think you plot. If you do plot, I have obviously ways to revenge you. So he's going to Will-O-Wisp. He's going to Will-O-Wisp here. So I actually do think it is in my best interest to pivot Glamora then, if that's what he wants to do. If he's going to Will-O-Wisp here. I could have also went Dashbun, but I really value health on Dashbun because I already let Wochi in take a little bit of damage, and Dashbun is here obviously for that Dragapult. I'm so shocked he was going to let me get damage. Whether he's Sash or not, I'm shocked that he was going to let me do a significant amount of damage to that Toxtricity on turn 1. I should have just been Earth Power instead of Energy Ball, and that would have been fine. So we're going to see what he does here. Hopefully he just Willows again. He's going to Volt Switch, though. Hey, that should not kill us. It does not kill us. We're going to live with just a little bit of HP, and we're going to see what he wants to do here. So what do I get a T-Spike up on? This game plan is going horribly so far. I'm not playing great. He could go Corviknight. He could just go Toxtricity again, I feel like. Toxtricity is just a fine play. And then I just go, what, back into Wuchi in? I think that's Tox, right? T-Spike's gone. Let's sludge bomb here. I can 
could use Gold Dingo a little bit more freely as a pivot, I guess. Maybe I could pivot Gold Dingo. Overdrive, we know he's not Specs, and he's likely not Modest. Overdrive is going to do about 60%. I really do think that uh, potentially a Volt Switch or a Sludge Bomb, one of the two is going to come out here. So maybe Gold Dingo is my best pivot. What Pokemon does he have that I value health on Gold Dingo for? Corviknight, I don't really need health on that. <sighs> if he Volts, we're in a little bit of trouble. I still really value my Glamora, though. Because that T-Spike, I can get up on Corviknight, I can get up on... Even Stealth Rocks are really nice for the Rotom. I could get Stealth Rocks up this turn, actually, and stack this Pokemon off. I really value the T-Spikes for the Dragapult League game. I I'm a little bit tunnel vision here, but I am going to go into Goldingo here. I am going to go to Goldingo. If he overdrives, I'm going to pivot Wojim, because I really do think he's either Scarf or Sash. I don't really see another item that he could be in this matchup to where he would stay in turn one against the Glamora. He's going to overdrive here, which does about what we expected. So I'm going to pivot, assuming he's Scarf, into the Wojim. If he stays in, he's obviously Scarf, right? Like he has to be, I, I would assume. I, but then again, we don't get a move to Oko him, so we're going to switch out first, so if he switches out, that's good information. Playing very poorly. It's just not get, do, not doing what I want to do. He's going to overdrive again, so that leads me to believe that he's Scarf. Pause. Hey guys, Future John Jr. here. I'm intervening to save you guys from another 20 minutes of this. Because... At this point, this is kind of what the battle just turns into. No disrespect to Matt, but I was super salty that I was beating myself and I became very self-aware at this point that I was playing very poorly and making myself lose. And just to put it simply, I was not entertaining or talking a whole lot. So, so Future John is here to walk you through some of my thought process and give you a breakdown of the rest of this match. That way it's in some fashion entertaining. And this weighed on me the whole week because I think post cons are super, super lame. I don't really enjoy doing them unless I have to do them. But I really feel like the quality of this video would be way, way lower if I just gave you the live comp. And that's why I decided to do this. I know a lot of people agree with me and they think post comms are lame, but I think it's better than the alternative that we could have had. Also, sorry, my voice is a little sick and from here on out you're gonna hear me like this and I apologize. From this position the game essentially went like this. On this turn I went ahead and doubled out Goldango into Ochian as the Toxtricity clicked Overdrive. The thought process here was I was still thinking he was Scarf, obviously he was not. We then went ahead and Leech Seeded on the switch into his Corviknight. I thought that obviously went into Corviknight there. I could get some very valuable chip as well as potential recovery as he went into that Corviknight. I debated on Knock or Protect on this following turn, but I ended up going for Protect because I thought that U-Turn was very, very likely. And then he actually clicks Reflect, which throws me really off guard because obviously Chi and Pao is going to be my win con. He knew that and Reflect is a very, very good bring on that Corviknight. And then the next turn we're going to actually Knock off to reveal that he is light clay and not boots and then that's going to be followed by a u-turn and he goes into dragapult which really threw me off guard because wuchian was kind of supposed to be here for the dragapult but because he went into the dragapult that told me one of two things one he was either going to tear a fire and send me packing obviously i was akaberry so i could risk that and i could go for the knockoff potentially knocking off whatever item the dragapult had on it but i valued health on wuchian a little bit more than expected in this game because of that toxicity and i thought that the other option was that he could go for a U-turn, knowing that he could kill Wuchian from this range. So I went ahead and went and dash bump. Big dash bump finally makes his debut as I do get that play correct and he does go for the U-turn. Unfortunately now though, I am in a pretty bad spot as Toxtricity does come out on the dash bump. I don't have a lot of very good options here. So I unfortunately have to go Wuchian and sack that Wuchian when I should have probably just sacked off Glamora and went into a different Pokemon. But I'm going to sack off Wuchian and then go into the Glamora to potentially break his Sash. Because at this point, I knew he was Scarf or Sash. I kept screaming Scarf, even though obviously, 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 now looking back, he is not in any situation Scarf. And this is why you write things down in Wi-Fi games, right? Like if I would have written that down, I would have been in a fine spot. But I went in Glamora to get that power jump off. Obviously, we go first, we get the damage on him, and we break his Sash as he is able to pick up the KO on Glamora. After that, I then go Goldingo now that I know that he is not Scarf, and I throw out a Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball from the range that Corviknight was at before had a chance to two-hit KO the Corv Corviknight, and if he went Corviknight, I was able to recover the following turn. Otherwise, I picked up a KO on the Toxtricity, so this was a good play. He is going to go into the Corviknight. We're going to put him in range of a two-hit KO here, as he is going to hard switch out and we get a recover off, and we preserve the Goldingo for that Toxtricity. Quickenile puts me in a really weird situation, because without Wochi and I actually do not switch into this Pokemon at all, my best play was to hope that he was a defensive Crook and Quack could live too, but I switch into Crocodile, and as you can see on your screen right now, Quack in no universe lives two Earthquakes from this very, very offensive Crocodile. 
And regardless, I do think that this is probably the proper sack because Goldengo still helps versus Toxtricity, Chi and Pao just wins the game, and Dash Bun is still here for the Dragon Ball. Anyway, we die to the second Earthquake, and then we learn Crook is indeed faster than our Quaquawa. And then I decide it's time, it's now or never, I'm playing horribly, I need to get back into this game. We go Chi and Pao, and my mindset here is if we win the 50-50 as to whether he close combats or Earthquakes, we win the game. If he close combats as we Terra Electric and we get the Sword Stance off, everything's in range and we win the game. If he Earthquakes as we don't Terra when we get a Sword Stance off, it's the same situation we win the game. So we are just going to go ahead and guess that he's going to go for close combat. I'm going to go for the Sword Stance and he actually switches out into the Corv Knight and we're in a fantastic spot now. I go for another Sword Stance on this Corv Knight expecting it to reflect. No matter what, Sword Stance puts me in a better spot than I was the previous turn because if I Sword Stance and he U-turns, I'm at plus four. If I Sword Stance and he reflects, then I'm essentially still at plus two and I can Sword Stance the following turn and just be in a better spot, essentially being at plus three, plus six with Reflect up. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and Sword Stance as he does throw up the Reflect. And then the following turn, I'm going to go ahead and SD again as he's going to throw up a slow U-turn and go into that Dragapult. And this is a tough turn. This turn can basically decide the game. I was so so confident in prep that he was Terra Fire Dragon. I thought Terra Fire Dragon Ball made the most sense versus my team. It beat the checks. Let me break down this turn for you because this turn decides the game. If I get will o -Wisp burned, I lose. If I kill the Dragapult, I win. I have both forms of priority in Ice Shard and Sucker Punch. If I Sucker Punch as he willows, I lose the game. Straight up, there's nothing I can do. If I Ice Shard and he's Terra Fire, I lose the game. There's nothing I can do. If I Ice Shard and he's Terra Ghost, I have to get a crit. Otherwise, I do not actually kill him, assuming he has any amount of bulk investment. And if he doesn't Terra and I Ice Shard, I win the game guaranteed. In my mind, I thought that he was going to Terra Fire Terra last year. I thought that was pretty zero downside so i'm gonna go for the sucker punch on the ultimate choke as he actually does not terra and i have to ask him or i have to go look at his footage because i don't know why he didn't terra because if i just shard him and i didn't beat myself here i won the game straight up and I, i'm very curious as to if that was like a misclick or what the what the case may be because he actually does reveal later on that he's terra ghost and just simply terra ghosting there was always your play because he does fire off the will-o-wisp so if i sucker punched it, it didn't really change anything to terra there except that he lived the ice shard guaranteed so knowing that he didn't terra looking back if i sharded i guaranteed one one, but it may I'm not sure if it was the misclick or what like if I started knowing he didn't Terra then I won the game guaranteed with Chi and Pao right there which blows it blows but Chi and Pao is gonna go down and so are our hopes of winning this game unfortunately I go dash bun and I play rough as he goes into toxicity and he's gonna actually give me this Pokemon as I body press he then goes into Azu and kills my dash bun and then I go gold dingo he belly drums in gold dingo's face as a nasty plot and he's gonna bring gold dingo down to almost nothing as gold dingo is gonna pick up the KO and then die to the incoming draggable so that was surely a game I think I played poorly I don't think there's any way around it if I would have just sharded I won the game guaranteed and I'm so upset because of that obviously looking back he was Terra Ghost but if he just terra there, there was no situation in which he lost that game unless he got crit by Ice Shard. But looking back at the same time, I should have just Ice Sharded because that was my best chance to win the game. Willow was objectively his best play and I had no reason to sucker punch. Obviously, massive choke on my end, but I shouldn't have been in that situation anyway. I played very poorly, kind of played my way out of it, but I played very, very poorly in the beginning of the game. I was so tunnel vision on getting that toxic spike up with Glamora. And that'll happen sometimes, man. And again, I hate, I hate that I had to do a post comp for this one because it makes me look like a sore loser. But again, I didn't want you guys to sit there and watch me not be entertaining and not talk. I promise you, this is much better than the alternative. I apologize. And again, be sure to check out Matt. Be sure to show him a lot of love. His link is down in the description below. He very much deserved this win. Like I said, I beat myself. I played so poorly, but we're gonna refocus and we're gonna go ahead and try to win against OG Albina next week. One of my best friends in the community. And in my mind, my Pokemon rival. So we're gonna try to come back for week four. Try to go three and one. We'll see how that goes. Thank you guys for all your support. It's been unreal. I'm almost at a thousand subscribers and I cannot thank you guys enough it's because of you guys that i'm even in this situation so thank you guys so so much but thank you guys so much for watching and for now guys this has been john jr signing off